Okay, so I wanted to uh, show the new sensor really quickly. This is something um, I've been working on because I want the next, the version that gets released, and I mean soon, has to be able to be adjustable to multiple sizes of hands. I mean, not the, not at the extremes with this design. So like, you know, maybe if you're, you got like Shaquille O'Neal hands or you've got like five-year-old hands, uh, then uh, you might have to, somebody else has to design that. This is for somewhere in that range between about 12 years old, an average 12-year-old hand, whatever that means. And, uh, you know, my hand, a little bigger and a little bit smaller, basically. That's what I'm looking at. So this is the design uh, here. This this is the um, this is the top. This silver piece here, and this is the bottom. Let me pull up the um, this middle bit here. This is the part that holds that um, that the filament routes through. I fold these bits up, and then the then the um, the filament goes straight through. So this is the sensor. This is it made, right? So there is the um, the sensor that let me sh let me see. let me take this off of here so you can see there's the sensor and there's the you can see you can see through there that little nub there in the middle that is where the anode touches and nowhere else right so uh, the way this one works is that this clips onto here like that and it uses the same um, the same mounting uh, joint that the rest of the system uses. So that way, um, this once this works, it works on my knuckles. It'll work, and it'll work anywhere else that because it is a mount point. So all I have to do is really. Let me see. I'll do it really quickly. I can put a sensor in there, and then I can. This is this fine one. It's open like, like that one. You see, and then I can. Boom, and that can be a sensor, uh, you know, and I can do that anywhere that there's, you know, mesh. Oh, and by the way, yeah, that all day, just so you know. Uh, I had the uh, intended effect the other day when I went out. Um, cat rolled up to me and uh, thought that it was a that it was some kind of strange tattoo, which is exactly the 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 vibe I was going for. But that's another video. So. Um, the sensor's in there, and um, I'm going to put, there's, there'll be two wires down in here, one for the pin, which is in the middle, and one for the uh, cathode, which is at the, which, that's a spiral, and at the end of the spiral is the cathode, you know, uh, for, that go to the Arduino. Um, let me see where my Arduino is at. They were, oh, here we go. So, there's the Pi. I'm putting everything onto the Pi Zero, and there should be a... There's an Arduino Pro Mini around here. So, oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. Okay. And so, um, so, th so, um, so the cathode goes to the outside edge of that spiral. The pin goes to the middle. And then the anode is here, right? And it goes right in the middle there. And so this one, instead of having that multi-part one that, I mean, this is multi-part, but it's all locked together. And so... Before, the sensing part was on the top, and I had a thing that pushed it, right? And that's been okay, but not optimal. It's just way too much, uh, too many, too many things to have to calibrate for. Whereas this one, it's all locked together, and it, has, it comes into contact with my knuckle. And then across here, it's pulled. So, you know, so it's my knuckle that's doing all of the pushing against the inside surface. And then I get the little electrical stimulation boost that I like. The ones that I release, there'll be one of these that'll be open and one of these that'll be closed. I'm not expecting everyone to, you know, start Arduino stimulating themselves yet. <laughs> but um, uh, this sensor, um, I f you know, I can put these together ahead of time. And right now, today's uh, job is to is instead of working my way from the fingertips down like I did uh, the first time, uh, I'm working my way from the wrist up. Since I already have this here as, and it's, it's, it's to anchor things to my hand, I can go ahead and put all the anchoring uh, mechanics in and uh, get that 
solid, get it feeling good, all of that, and then integrate the sensors into that space. There'll also be a different color because I'm in that fashion mode now. So it's, you know, I gotta, this has gotta be bling as well. So um, that's the sensor. And so uh, today is um, to test this sensor, uh, I put Fermata onto the Pro Mini, right? Standard Fermata. Um, I have a real-time kernel to run on the Pi Zero. And I've already got pure data installed. I've got a, I've got a, um, a distro that doesn't have any, it's just set up and ready to go, and it's real time. So um, the shift is that uh, th the sensors will go to this, this will go to here, just like or go to the Raspberry Pi as normal. But then I'm going to be using the um, OTG mode in the Pi Zero to network the hands and the legs to a single Pi 3. This should say, this should uh, clear up a lot of issues I've had with, because um, the Pi is great, but you want to be able to, to segment out um, what it does. You know, it's very good if you look at it as a parallel computing system. So what I have right here to me is not two computers, it's five cores. You see, I have five computers here, five cores. So letting, letting a Pi Zero and an Arduino um, Pro Mini all together, this is about seven dollars, you know, total, which is incredible. Um, is to do the do the processing of the sensors and all of that stuff, and text input and all of that on the Pi Zero, then network uh, the information that gets um, done here over to here where the synthesis is done, and then from here to another computer that will deal with um, audio output. Uh, and that way I'm getting, I'm getting like the full um, use of the, um, of the CPU and of uh, memory and of, um, it's just, it's a very much easier way to get the thing to act right. And um, without uh, an, external S uh, an external sound card, I'm, I'm able to get 20 milliseconds out of this with my real time kernel. 20 milliseconds latency. Uh, with a with an actual sound card, I'm da I've got it down to about two or three milliseconds. I kind of put it around three or four, just so I have a little bit of headroom, so it doesn't choke out. But um, offloading the sensor processing, which takes a lot of, which you know takes a lot of its own resource necessitation, um, having that on a separate computer, I think is going to um, it's going to yield. Uh, many benefits. So I guess we'll find that out uh, in the next hour or so as I put that together. I just wanted to share the sensor design now before it gets integrated into a more complex whole. We'll just kind of go through the steps of these things. All right, peace.